Welcome back to Trends here on Inner Sanctum. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. Pommy and Oz, and welcome to another show where today we are going to be showcasing five players we think will be taken in the mid-season draft coming up really sharp. A chance for sides to refresh their list with long-term injuries, or if they were wise and diligent, keeping their list spots open to see what was coming through early doors in the state leagues. If you are new around here, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Let us know you're enjoying the content. We've got a host of shows on this very channel. And also check out the website where we have some lovely written pieces that accompany the videos and showcase sport all around the globe. So let's run that intro and get into it. I just slide right by that energy. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran, said no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. So all this will be finalised at some point later this evening. Um, they have until Tuesday to finalise their list and really make sure that everything is spotted. So at the moment, as you can see, we've got some asterisks there. And what we're looking for there is teams to long-term injury their players and create some confirmation. But as we can see, as the draft order stands, Jay, Jay Cully for Eagles, he should go on the long-term injury list. You've got North Melbourne with pick two. Hawthorne, Richmond at four, GWS, Sydney, Geelong, Fremantle, Essendon, Doggies, Port, who look like they're going to get Big Mitch, the big Greek forward, who is very much highly rated, but is out long term with injury. Hawthorne, Richmond, GWS and Essendon, should they do. We've got a few players there that we are waiting on confirmation. Port, obviously, we said Mitch Giagaldis. You've got Jason Castagna's retirement for Richmond. Um, they've already put Caleb Smith on that inactive list. Adam Kennedy is on the inactive list. And Darcy Jones for GWS. Harrison Jones is one we're waiting on. They have got an open spot, though. Max Lynch and um, an open list spot for Hawthorne. And Jack Mahoney it should be on the inactive list. And Sam Reed makes them, them asterisks up. And it's going to be interesting what they do. Um, all sides will probably be either going with maybe West Coast might look at younger players. Um, a few players, GWS, do like going with them second chance players. It's going to be a really interesting one. But one who has been talked about a lot, Gippsland Power and currently at Box Hill in the VFL, Ryan Marich, 193, 84. He's a proper tall forward, um, can play taller than his position as well. Incredibly athletic, very good with the ball on deck. A real strong grab. We expect him to go first or second. And he's had a really, really strong year. If you look at his VFL, um, round nine and round 10 against Essendon and Sydney, he was phenomenal against Southport, kicking two goals too, um, taking the eight marks. He was everywhere. Real good conduit for his forward line. And at Essendon, he really did showcase his ability at goal. Let's have a look at his stats, though, combined, because he has been repping Gippsland Power. And you can see here, 16.8 touches, 6.4 marks. He ain't shy of that defensive duty either. 2.4 goals a game and 0.8 behind. He'll definitely be one or two. And he's definitely one that has got enough probably to contribute now, but also has got enough probably to contribute a little bit later on in his career as well. He's a real, real live wire as well, real excitement machine, and he'll really fit, should it be uh, North Melbourne, should it be a Hawthorne, should it be West Coast, where he predicts him to go. Next, we go across the country to Claremont, to the 22-year-old, 199 centimetre, 99 keg, Jack Buller. And he is a mountain of a player, an incredibly physical player, an incredibly intelligent player as well, understands the use of his body, has a real strong core, but he uses his body work well. Particularly when he's resting forward, he likes to engage the defenders very early and then make the lead as well, which is very in vogue in the AFL this year. And let's take a look at him. His numbers have been really impressive. There's been some standout games as well. Round four, and um, round two, sorry, against South Fremantle, he kicked four goals. 
Um, a bit more ruck work in the last couple of weeks and also for his state game, but he is showcasing how strong of a lad he is. 6.5 marks, very strong in the air, very clean hands, likes to bring his players into the game as well. If he is working that wing defensive exit as well, he's quite stationed there quite a bit as that exit ball. 1.5 goals a game, 7.3 hit outs, a real strong performer and definitely someone that if you take him at your club, there is enough scope here with Jack to really go up a gear as well, in my opinion. I think that he can be a lot higher than he is. And at 22, the hard work of his development has been done going into an AFL system. So definitely one to watch and could be a little smoky. This is probably one of my favourites coming in, Jaden Hunter. Playing for Perth Demons, 196, 93 kegs, 21. Is that awkward third toll forward, that 196. He, he likes to play a little bit higher up the ground. He could go anywhere from two to eight. Let's take a look at Big Jade. And this guy here is an animal in the goal kicking sense of the word. Just come off the back of five goals against South Fremantle, but he's had a few. In the reses, he was tearing them up. He's come into the State League from round five. Four goals in his first game, two goals in his second, five in the last a plethora of marks, a real conduit for the midfield as well. A real strong performer. 9.3 touches, 5 marks, 0.7 tackles, 3.8 goals, 1.2 behinds. This guy here can really take a game away from you quite quickly. Real sweet set shot of goal. He ain't shabby on the deck as well for his height, but he attacks the ball hard. And definitely a player that if you are going to be in that lower tier and you're looking for a rebuild, definitely takes a punt. Be interested here to see what Richmond do with uh, Jaden Hunt. Um, I, I could see him going. I could also see him going pick one, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Buller or Hunt on the radar of these type of teams. I could see even a GWS taking him. He would really fit the mould in their game style. So a real strong player and a player definitely to look out for in the draft. A very famous footballer here. Um, if you're a Carlton or a Demons fan, you're very familiar with him. Um, had some big back issues, but he's really stood out for Williamstown, where he's playing his trade. 27 years old, so mature, you know what you're going to get. Very good coverage. Few teams with back and um, backman issues. Sydney, we're looking at you. 196 and 100 kegs, 27 years old, key defender. He'll go somewhere between 5 and 10. And He's really stood out um, dropping down the level like he has done going to Williamstown. And he's he, he's looked really steady as well. There's a few ex-players in this league as well, but he has been really strong, really defensively against Cowton, round nine, the seven marks, 13 marks against Collingwood. They He was really strong there and did swing a little bit forward for them. But you can see the leadership. He looks fit. He looks hungry. He's definitely a best 22 player and a very safe pick. And if you're looking, like, say, if you are a Sydney, you're looking for something now to tide you over, Oscar McDonald fits the bill. He's a plug-in play footballer. And if he can stay fit, which you'd imagine a short-term contract to tide him over, and it also gives them protection, it makes sense. It makes sense, especially when Sydney... People are saying they're out of the eight. I genuinely don't believe they are. I think you'll see two sides in the teens at the moment crop up into the eight around there. They'll definitely fight it out. This gives them that chance. And then the cousin of Big Lukey Ryan, we know how good he is, is none other than Brandon Ryan. And this kid here is a big lad, 25 years old, 200 centimetres, 87 kegs. He should go around that eight later mark. Forward can pin him, pinch it in the ruck as well. Obviously, with the size, he does play that ruck forward role, but more of that key position type player. And he's had some splendid games for Northern Bullants. He taught Sydney apart five goals too, Southport three goals too, um, put Richmond to the sword as well with three goals very early on. And he's very mobile for his size, but he's incredibly strong as well. Um, which you'd expect when you're that big. An absolute menace as well. He draws defenders to him. 14 touches this year, five marks, 1.2 tackles, 2.6 goals, 
1.4. He's a really, really strong, strong as an ox type footballer. I could see Essendon having a sniff here. I don't know why. I've got a little gut that they may do it. There's a few players around there. I mean, but I just think that this guy here with the missing Peter Wright would be a plug-in play. This guy's ready to go and he's really showcased it at the Bullants. The Bullants are a really good side to watch as well if you are into your State League footy. They play an attractive brand and they give it a go. But that's the five we're looking out for. We expect them to be taken up. Who are your club looking at? What would you like to see? Let us know in the comments. Look after yourself. Enjoy your week. Trends out.